Hello. Um, hello to anyone who has happened to stumble upon this video. Um, so I haven't had a made a video in like three weeks, unfortunately. Uh, things have been kind of chaotic lately. And I wanted to make sure I got one out. This will probably be pretty short, but I wanted to do something. Um, so I wanted to talk about other things that was on my mind that uh, I haven't fully flushed out yet. I'm just kind of working through. I figured I'd throw these out here. Um, so today I want to talk about thinkers and feelers, right? So let's define terms a little bit. Um, someone who I would call a feeler is somebody who is feeling dominant. Um, what that means is basically they primarily tend to rely on their feelings um, throughout daily interactions um, and I'm trying to figure out how to find that sort of like feelings is the go-to way to to do things, to get things done when interacting with people. Um, some people, they're, you know, they're concerned about the vibe. Um, when it comes to communication, it's about feelings. When it comes to um, making decisions, it's more feelings-based. And thinkers would be somebody who's more thinker-dominant. I mean, I guess these all seem kind of obvious, but um, thinker dominant. So somebody who is primarily concerned with logic when making decisions, when interacting, when going throughout your day, it's all logic over feelings, right? So, um, oh, also I like to say that to be a filler does not mean that you don't use logic. Um, it's actually been the case that I've met feelers that logic is not their go-to um, thing. You know what I mean? Like, uh, like I, I spoke to one, and his <laughs> when we discussed it, 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 what he said was interesting. He said. I mean, I, I think about stuff when I need to, but otherwise it's not important. I don't really give it any thought. Um, but he's like, when, basically when it comes to things that he had no other choice in, he would stop and think about them and think about what he's gonna do, but he was much more comfortable just, you know, using emotion and just sort of going off how he felt. Okay, and um, also in terms of thinkers, this is actually would apply to me. Um, I am thinking dominant, but my uh, feelings are very strong. Um, in terms of personality, like I would, I would have masculine feelings um, and feminine thinking, and even though my thinking is feminine. Um, it is what I lead with, so it's it's my primary tool to kind of navigate throughout the world. Um, so yeah, I've been noticing when discussing things with fillers, and I don't want to kind of put all fillers in here um but it just does seem something i've come across a lot where fillers are very comfortable with using what other tactics to win an argument right and um it actually works to my disadvantage to be a thinker and i've noticed this because when discussing something, um, after 
I mean, I guess perhaps I can't blame him in this regard. After losing the debate several times, their tactics will switch. So them trying to like discuss something and just kind of bowing out gracefully if they lose tends to uh, go away after a while. Like I will debate with this guy and um, he is very comfortable sort of like, we'll start off debating something sticking to the point and then he'll go for something of a like a minor I guess victory of some sort so like he'll get off he'll think he's on topic I actually don't quite think he's aware of it he'll think he's on topic and then later as the debate sort of changes he'll be like oh see yeah I was using your own tactics against you that's what happened be like uh, that's not really what happened you know what I mean like um, and I'm I'm probably not explaining this well because I'm kind of shit at explaining this stuff and I've just woken up so my brain's a little foggy um, but he will try to use my own tactics against me you know uh, he'll basically try to mimic how I debate and then once I get to a point where it's just like, oh, okay, we're not even debating what we were originally talking about. He's kind of turned the whole conversation. Like he'll do a thing where he keeps moving the goalposts. And, um, excuse me for a second. morning coffee um he'll do a thing where he continues to move the goal posts and at a certain point i recognize like okay this is it's it's kind of futile to keep the argument going at this point um so i'll i'll just sort of like start pulling away and stop and he'll take that as a win and it's just like for me to have to go for and explain to him why it's not a win, it's kind of a pain. Because sometimes, like, getting Phyllis to comprehend the logic can be a difficult. Because you gotta, you, you were originally here, and you're debating one-on-one, -on -one, but since he's gone all the way around, and you ended up over here somewhere, and I, for me to explain to him, I had to go all the way around and debate him, you know, explain to him what happened. I'm going to lose him. Like, I've, I've attempted this several times in the past, and it just, it, they never quite keep it. You know, they never quite keep track of explaining what happened. So there's that. Um, also, there are times when debating where they're very comfortable using like a personal example for something. And uh, you know, I'll be like, all right, well, yeah, that's too personal. I don't wanna use personal examples related to us as individuals to debate with because things can go very south from there. And again, I'm arguing against a filler. So their emotions are always into it. So if they decide to use an example um, say a friend of mine or my wife or you know something that's just really personal it doesn't bother me but if i try to return that favor it's going to go bad real quick because they can't help their their emotions are attached to the people they're concerned about and even if i'm just giving an example it just goes bad so like i will have to kind of restrain myself in that regard and um, yeah, they're very comfortable using that tactic and taking that as a win. Um, and I found that like, there are restrictions as a thinker. And I'm not sure.
I'm not sure um, if the reason the reason I'm, I'm bumping into this restriction is because I'm a thinker or because of like my feelings and I don't want to I don't want to I don't want to hurt the other person right and the reason I say that is fillers don't seem to have any restrictions like they're perfectly fine going where the emotions takes them and they're perfectly fine using whatever tactics to win the, the argument right um and myself i am not comfortable with that um if i i'm arguing with a, a filler i have to take everything they say in consideration during the argument, right? So I am restrained by the logic because if they make a point and they may not even make that point well, but in making, when they presented that point, in my mind, I followed that point all the way to its conclusion. I might realize that even though they stopped here as I followed that point to its conclusion here, realized that once I got here, there was something valid about it. And I can't go beyond that point. Um, yeah, so that that's interesting. It's, I don't know, I don't know if all thinkers, well, I mean, no, I'm sure all thinkers don't have that issue. Um, but yeah, it's definitely something I've been bumping into. And um, yeah, so it's almost like, in a sense, the logic will make me stop myself. It won't let me go beyond that because I understand that even though Even though uh, they don't get that point, they haven't worked it out. I understand that that's a dead end, and um, I can't logically go beyond that or continue to push from that angle because it's wrong. It's logically wrong. Um, I can't win. It's like it's not solid ground anymore. Like when arguing from at least for me, but I, I've noticed this with several other thinkers. When arguing, you need solid ground to stand upon. And once you have that solid ground, you know, you can you can comfortably stand upon that and argue from that point. Um, and whatever point you are arguing from, it needs to be solid ground for you to stand on it. Again, not a restriction for a filler. They do not need it nor do they care about having solid ground i don't even think they see the ground for them it's like my point uh it's 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 like how they want to win and what they're valuing what their priorities are at the moment that is all important so if they believe they're right, which they usually do, that's all is important. It's important that they are right and that they follow through. And um, the value, the uh, logic is of no value to them. They don't care. They will happily run through it. Whereas I am restricted by the logic. And um, I find in that case, it is a handicap. Um, but like I said, it's not something that all fillers are restricted by. And I think it might come down to like my morals, my feelings on things. Like, um, my morals are very important to me. And I think that perhaps there might be some 
it might come down to intellectual honesty, I think. Because it's definitely something that I'm bumping into. And intellectual honesty, I think, kind of falls in between. It's it's logical based, but it's also um, got some ethics that it kind of falls on as well. So that's something I was looking into a while back. I need to get back into that because I haven't quite um, fully fleshed out that arena. Like I'm still learning in that in that arena. So. But yes, that's that's what I'm. I'm pretty sure that's what it comes down to. It's it's some kind of intellectual honesty, and it, it won't let me go beyond that. And um, to be honest, I don't want to lose that um, because I, you gotta have to me at least. You gotta have some kind of checks and balances that you operate by. I'm not comfortable with getting a win at all costs in any regard into, you know, dealing with whatever it is you're talking about. Um, because I'm just not comfortable with that. Which is interesting because fillers fall on both sides of the line with that. Like, I've met fillers that like, no, I'm not, I will not go beyond a certain point to achieve my ends because I'm not comfortable doing something that goes against my values, right? I respect that. I, I feel very much the same way. But there are other fillers who are just like, my value is me. I care about me. And anything else that does not, um, and by me, I mean their children, uh, significant other, whatever immediate family, that all seems to fall as them. Like, um, that all seems to fall under the category of them. So, you know, say if it was a guy and he had a wife, he had children, that is all he cares about um, on a certain level. And he's very comfortable bulldozing, destroying, or any harm that come to anybody else that it's not him and he is he's very comfortable with that so um he does not have restrictions of like values and uh very little restrictions of morals which you would think as a feeler would not be the case but i found that is very much the case you you cannot it's interesting. Like you cannot define a filler and think that they are one hundred percent across the spectrum as far as values. Just like you, you might have a thinker and not you can't really define him as being one hundred percent across the spectrum as far as thinking. Um, everybody does it, I guess, to their own level of comfort um but yeah those it's just something i've been noticing lately those restrictions and um yeah i'm not sure what to do about that i mean i'm not sure i'm definitely not going to try to push past my uh my comfort level as far as the logic goes i'm, I'm not willing to do that and um, I'm definitely not going to even consider doing anything that violates any kind of moral ground or intellectual um, honesty. So I'm definitely not going to do that. But I will admit that it sucks because I do not like to. I don't like to lose the debate. And I, that's probably a thinker thing, I suppose. Um, and the thing is, I have feminine uh, thinking. So what that means is. I will always consider your rebuttal, okay? Um, as to somebody who has masculine thinking, they're just, they're gonna sledgehammer your rebuttal. Like, they feel like they are right, 
and they're very angry that you are I shouldn't say very angry but usually it comes off as very angry that you are challenging them on the logic and um they have no problem just sledgehammering whatever you come through. They don't even consider it. No, you're wrong. This is why you're wrong. And they just relentlessly, you know, destroy you. Um, yeah, if you push them on that, it, it's a fight. Um, being feminine thinking, which I used to think was a disadvantage. And I guess in certain ways it is because, like I said, I, I will consider your rebuttal. And I do run into that problem where even though you haven't worked it out, I will work it out to its conclusion and it can't work against me. Um, so even though that's the case, I still feel it's better to have feminine th thinking. Because um, I don't want to, I don't want to be one of those guys on the internet arguing about some insignificant little thing and just fucking going back and forth for it like eight hours over the fucking on Facebook or some silly shit like that. Um, yeah, I don't want to be that guy. So, yeah. But, uh... Plus, I think feminine, think feminine thinking allows you to be more flexible. So, like, somebody who has masculine thinking, it just comes across like... They got this big machete and they're just coming at you relentlessly. Bow, 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 you know. And if you have feminine thinking, which I do, it feels more like, yeah, sure, if I needed to, I guess I can hammer away at you. But it feels more like I'm capable of being surgical with my thinking. You know? it's sort of like, uh, using it with the expertise of like a scalpel you know i'm able to parse the logic take across take off this little piece and that little piece and use it against you you know so it allows me to be a lot more flexible <sighs> but anyway um i said i was gonna keep this short it's already 22 minutes so um that's just some of my things i discovered about fillers and thinkers sort of like debating back against each other and how surprisingly being a thinker can put you at a disadvantage and I used to wonder like why we even it sounds arrogant but why we even have fillers um, and I guess that's because our society plays so much emphasis on thinking we don't really consider fillers um, but fillers, I've discovered after giving us some thought that they are very important. I mean, they are kind of like the caretakers of our society, you know. I mean, if you go to go to a hospital, those are primarily uh, fillers as far as like nursing, taking care of people. There are fillers doctors, but they're also thinker doctors as well. Um, but just primarily helping people, supporting people. Sometimes you need that people to work through stuff, help you go through stuff. Those are typically gonna be more fillers, um, like willing to work with you emotionally and help you heal in some capacity. Um, all right, well, I'm rambling. Uh, anyway, this is just another episode of Just My Thoughts. Um, thanks for listening. I guess cyberspace, nobody really watches this, but anyway, thanks. Uh, if somebody happened to stumble upon this and you had some kind of comments or something, we'd love to hear it. Um, all right, take it easy. Goodbye.